Today on Sports Path, football season is in full swing. We have highlights and standings to get you your Friday night fix. North High School is doing some special work for veterans and their families. We'll get you caught up on some of the, and we'll also get you caught up on some of the exciting things you may have missed over the summer. The 10th season of Sports Path begins now. Welcome to Sports Path. We hope you enjoyed your summer. She is Jamie Dustin and I'm Zach Halverson. It is with a heavy heart that I have to report to you today that six-year Sports Path host Tim Peterson left us a few weeks ago. We'd like to extend our condolences to his family and friends. Zach, and he's alive and well. Tim just moved to Iowa. Oh. Anyways, we begin the show with some football. Hill Murray made the short trip to North High School to play the Polars. Historically, this game hasn't gone well for the Polars, but to struggling Hill Murray Pioneers gave the Polars of the best shot at a victory in recent years. It was a close battle until the very end and was a certain TV 19 classic. The highlights here from September 6th, Hill Murray, North St. Paul, and it was a heck of an atmosphere down there. We are glad to get down there and cover it. Just a few miles separate these schools, and the scoring began with a field goal by Lefebvre. It was a 40-yard field goal for the Pioneers, and so they laid 3-0. The uh, Polish, they're only trying to respond here. This is second quarter, huge run down the sidelines, taken out there near the 36 or 37, and then that will set up this play here coming up, a big, huge gain for the Polars as it is Copago getting to the end zone. Touchdown. Nothing Polar. but red for the Polars there as it is now eight to three as they converted a two year conversion. As you see the brand new turf field, it is a pretty sight to see. Head down there, check it out if you haven't seen it yet. And the fans love it, they certainly do. Hill Murray trying to respond as uh, there are, they moved the ball down the field. A huge gain here for the Pioneers, and they get down near the red zone. As it was 8-3, to three, by the way, at the end of the first half. This is in the third quarter, and the Pioneers trying to get back that lead, and this is going to be Kruger as he chases down that end zone, gets tackled near the 8-yard line. Unfortunately for the Polars, after having that lead, Kruger decided to take control of this game as he somehow stays on his feet, makes his way to the end zone, touchdown, Hill Murray Pioneer. So the Polars with a or Pioneers rather with a lead this time as it is 10 to 8. Polars get it back, however. Run for a score. A lot of running. The game was primarily played on the ground. And now this one though, as you see the Pioneers. Air it out deep, huge gain there, and a beautiful play. Now that would set up this touchdown. Kruger moving it in, spinning around. Nobody can stop him as he gets to his, gets to the end zone. Here's another Dusty Kruger play. Wow, making his way through, sticking on his feet, diving to the end zone. Another touchdown for Kruger, and uh, the. Pioneers now starting to run away with it. Pullers, well, they work back their way back down the field here. Huge run, somehow staying on his feet, keeping his effort up, and coming down there, that's confidence Cabogo making his way down the field and helping his team get this set up here as another running play brings this guy in the end zone, it is Akeem Sulaf as the Polars starting to fight back now. Very close score in this one. 
Within three, five minutes and 20 seconds left. Hill Murray's got the ball. They want to kill off some time on the clock here as they run it around Kruger. Making a huge something out of nothing. Getting down past the 50 to the 40. Up to the 30 and tackled near the 20 yard line. A huge gain there for Kruger. And uh, you know what? Pioneers may just uh, put this one away, make it a two score game, and uh, just get it over with here. But the uh, handoff. Oh, oh, ball's lost. A fumble. North St. Paul takes over. Drama, excitement. Here we go, North St. Paul with the ball. One final chance, can they make their way down the field? Here's the throw and it is, oh, lost. And that'll do it here as the final score. Hill Murray Pioneers with a few touchdowns and a field goal get the 25 to 22 victory. And a huge, huge win for the Pioneers as their first of the season. Still their only one. We'll take a look at the Class of Suburban Conference standing in a second. But uh, first, bring it back here to the studio. Jamie, uh, just really tight game, really close game. What, uh, what were your thoughts on it? And as you see it, you know, again, Hill Murray usually you know, beats uh, North St. Paul pretty decidedly. It was only three points this year. Yeah, it definitely was a fun one to watch. You could see both teams had a really strong run game. They both have a couple of guys who could break tackles and who could get into the end zone. So it was definitely a good matchup, unfortunately. At home, the Polars couldn't pull out a victory, but it was a fun one to watch. Let's take a look at those classic suburban conference standings. Yeah, you see Tartan on top. They're doing some pretty good uh, work up there. 4-0, and oh, perfect season thus far. But they're going to get tested on Friday. South St. Paul versus Tartan at South St. Paul on Friday night. So one of those uh, two undefeated teams will uh, most likely, well, we'll have to go down. You know, and that'll be a really fun one. Another undefeated team in the conference, St. Thomas Academy, taking on Monday at Monday. Uh, so Monomedi could get a pretty big victory here if they can move St. Thomas Academy down. That's also on Friday. That game will be on TV19 Sports. There's Hail Mary 1-3. and three, Just uh, you know, had some uh, off-field issues uh, over the summer. Uh, also North St. Paul, they're 1-3. Hail Mary just uh, not, uh, not up to where they're usually. I mean, they were just in the... They did lose uh, guys like Zach Lavelle, um, but just uh, trying to re rebuild that uh, core and get back up and uh, to where the Pioneers usually are. Um, so it'll be interesting. Suburban East Conference standings now. White Bear Lake not doing too well. Uh, that's an understatement. One and three right now. Number nine. And you see Park has a victory. And you only saw that once last year and none at all the last few years before that. They are uh, one and three. And that's because they beat White Bear Lake a couple weeks ago. Uh, that's stunning victory there for Park as they made the major upset. But White Bear Lake coming off a victory last Friday against Forest Lake. 50 to nothing on that game. They have homecoming this Friday. Big victory. By the way, Hastings, we got to talk about this really quickly. As you say, Hastings 2 and 2. Stillwater 3 and 1. Hastings came back from 28 to nothing to defeat the Stillwater Ponies last, last Friday in home, at, at, uh, at Stillwater's homecoming in overtime. It was a, we, we got to watch it after the White Bear Lake game on Friday, which was that, and it was really stunning. Uh, so the Hastings Raiders, shocker, shocker there. So been really cool uh, football season thus far, really weird in terms of you have victories here, here, and here. But uh, yeah, again, this Friday though, if you are a classic suburban conference football fan, uh, this is your, your prime Friday here. Uh, get out there. Get out to some games. Yeah. This upcoming Friday, like Zach said, North High School will host Military Appreciation Night at their football game against Spring Lake Park. Members of the military, veterans, and family members will receive free admission, a concession stand voucher, and two tickets to North Theater's production of Guys and Dolls. The game will also feature a wide array of military-inspired songs performed by the North's band and choir and a special recognition of Richard Thill, one of the last surviving members of the USS Ward. They will be collecting donations at the event with proceeds going towards North St. Paul's Veterans Park. Now over to girls soccer. The defending state runner-ups White Bear Lake Bears hosted the Woodbury Royals last week. Here are the highlights there at White Bear Stadium. And it was a uh, pretty cool atmosphere. White Bear Lake and Woodbury historically have some pretty solid uh, soccer programs. This year is not uh, getting it together thus far. It was early in the season. The teams are trying to figure everything out. Uh, this one, Leah Hines comes out to play. Kicks it away. Oh, off the Woodbury Royal there. And she carries 
carries it forward and scores. That was Rachel Hewitt with the goal. And with just under, under 10 minutes to go in the uh, first half. So the Whitbury Royals uh, taking control early, getting some momentum, and uh, they certainly used it here as later on, just about a minute later, after that first goal, coming down, making some good moves, and just getting a solid shot off. Leah Hines couldn't get there in time. Another goal there for the Woodbury Royals, and it was a 2 to nil victory. White Bear Lake falls to the Woodbury Royals. And uh, going into the Suburban East standings uh, here between White Bear Lake and Woodbury, you see Woodbury on the top there, 5-1 and one in the conference, 8-4 uh, and four overall. Uh, White Bear Lake down 3-3, three and three, 500 in the, uh, the conference. And that's not, uh, not having a season like last year, but that was so special. Tara Hobbs, by the way, goaltender last year, doing some really good things over at the University of Minnesota right now. Um, and we'll actually hopefully get a story with her in a couple weeks uh, working on that right now. Uh, moving on to Classic Suburban Conference, with the Monomedi Zephyrs doing some amazing work on the top. They're 7-0, 11-1 and overall. Monomedi, they uh, have a good soccer program every year. Hill Murray, 5-2, Tartan, 2-4 in the conference, and 1-3-1 and for North St. Paul. Now over to the boys' soccer. Uh, in the standings here for the uh, boys' soccer in the Suburban East Conference, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty interesting. They're kind of similar to the uh, girls' soccer in the sense that Woodbury, number two, four, one, and one. White Bear Lake down, same place, sixth place with two, three, and one record. And Stillwater leading with five, zero, oh, and zero oh record there, eight, one, and one overall. Into the classic suburban conference now. Nar St. Paul, they're just doing some good things every year, apparently. North St. Paul with a solid soccer program, six, one, and zero oh on the top. Just above uh, State Times Academy, 5 and 1. And in the bottom of that uh, sandwich is Hill Murray, 5 1 and 2. Wanna be at I number 5. And Tartan, number 7, with a 1 4 and 1 record. Now over to some college soccer. Jim. Yeah, the Century College Wood Ducks men's soccer team played host to Riverland Community College back on September 18th. Let's take a look at those highlights. Men's soccer between Riverland Community College and Century College. Change it up here, and now a throw in coming. It's in the box, and a sliding play, and a goal. Beautiful moves there by Ryan Flynn. And the Australian, Gossi, puts the Wood Ducks up 1 0. Here's Yang. Played in, shot score. Had some success uh, in some other sports as well. As an opportunity here, kicked over Montreal Gray. Now pass in front and an easy wide open goal. Just putting it in was David Villani. This final score: the Wood Ducks defeat Riverland four to nil. When we come back, we'll sail away out at the White Bear Yacht Club. But first, highlights from a rivalry volleyball match between North St. Paul and Tartan coming up next on Sports Path. Hi, I'm Community TV. I'm Network TV. What are you doing with all the network's equipment? Actually, this all belongs to the community station. Settle down. What could you possibly do with all this? It's not just for me. Many members of our community use this stuff to produce their own shows. Produce their own shows? Each year, Network spends billions of dollars producing high-quality content. We could never afford to trust the likes of you with our equipment. They don't even let me touch that stuff. Trust me, with a few lessons, anyone can make TV. Anyone? Could I hold one of those cameras? Sure. Sweet. Zach Halverson here on the set of Sports Path, and if you notice next to me, a wide open chair, and it could be yours, and you could be the new co-host here in the 10th season of Sports Path. If you want to talk sports, if you want to call sporting events, this could be your big shot. Let us know if you're interested. The number is 651-747-3822, or the email, nicholas at onlocationtv.org. You'll get in contact with our sports producer, Nicholas Anderson, and it could be the start of a long sports broadcasting career here at TV19 Sports. Pass! Shot Looking to launch it deep. A lot of down there. Can he catch up to it? He can! He's into the end zone! Touchdown! We're all together. It's kind of neat to see how we 
Bob Zach. Albert throws up the three. Good. Pioneers with a good opportunity and the goal! Big hook. And a jab right to the jaw. And lights were out. Tying the game up at four with this power play goal. New school records from two freshmen. Yeah, I want to remind you, anytime you want the latest and the best of Northeast Suburban Area sports, tune in to TV19. You will get the best coverage. Don't forget that. Coming up in January, I'll be taking a leave of absence going on maternity leave, so this chair will be open. If you're interested in joining the Sports Path team, you can contact Nick and he'll give you all the information. So you're leaving me too, huh? Only for a little while. I'm lonely. <laughs> I'm lonely. All right. North and Tartan, uh, they don't like each other. In fact, they seriously hate each other. Uh, maybe, maybe hate's a strong word, but when these two schools go at it, they take no prisoners, especially in the volleyball court. Here are the highlights from Tuesday the 23rd. It was a packed Tartan gymnasium, and uh, man, the atmosphere in every single uh, game that these two teams play. It is absolutely stunning. So here's a big play here. Tartan trying to get a big uh, big lead here. Here's Tia Albert. She's really good at basketball. She's really good at volleyball. She's just an athlete all around. There's another big play by Tartan as they're trying to fight off the North St. Paul Polars there. They come back here with a couple of big plays. Boom, Vukmanovic. We've been following her for a couple of years now. She is a solid volleyball player. Now Tartan fighting the back line there. Beautiful spot placement there. And here's a spike. No chance there for Tartan. It just was back and forth throughout the, the entire match here. As another play there by the North St. Paul Polars. Lutmanovic blocked, comes back, and Tartan does a good job. T. Elbert there to play that back. And she is happy. Look at her. She's, she's going. So are the crowd. Half the crowd's going to do it, too. Here's another play. A huge spike. North St. Paul Polars, they're happy. And uh, you know what? They're happy. You know why? You know why, Jamie? You know why they're happy? Why is because that? they won three to one. Congratulations, That's a great reason to be happy. Exactly. They're doing pretty good in the standings. Let's take a look at them. Classic Suburban Conference standings now. Uh, as we see, Dorsey Paul, perfect. They're perfect. Five and zero oh. on the top. Next to Hill Murray, who's also perfect. Five and zero. Oh. And then Tartan, three and two. And Monami and I, one and three. So in terms of Fab Five schools, volleyball is like totally the best sport ever. And then to going over the Suburban East Conference standings, White Bear Lake, ugh. 0-3. Oh, uh, they're getting there you know, early in the season thus far. You know, volleyball starts after all the sports, so they're still trying to get everything going. Hopefully they can get something here as they're down again eighth place. But Stillwater, Roseville, and Creighton run out the top three with three and no records. Uh, so we'll see how the White Billy Bears do in Suburban East. But again, this is the year uh, for Classic Suburban in terms of our Fab Five schools in volleyball. Switching gears a little bit to something that hits close to home for us, our master control operator, Ray Winstrand, was badly beaten early in August in St. Paul. Ray is currently recovering from his serious injuries, and medical expenses are starting to mount. You can help Ray and his family by participating in Putts for Ray, a benefit for Ray's fund. A $20 donation will for the fund will include an entry to a mini golf tournament, prizes, raffles, food, and the silent auction. The event is on Saturday, October 5th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Goodrich Golf Dome. You can follow Ray's recovery on his Caring Bridge page. The link to that is on the screen. The White Bear Yacht Club played a host to a special event involving the White Bear Lake Regatta. Local image cameras were there, and here is the story. Also, Nicholas Anderson from TV19 Sports was there. Here's the story. hosting a, a regatta for the Twin Cities Youth Sailing Organization. We've got 70 boats here today at White Bear Yacht Club. We're delighted to have so many boats here. We have a brand new facility today and it is so exciting to see so many kids here setting up their sails. Moms and dads and kids excited to learn to sail. Um, we've got three different fleets running today. The biggest kids, the most experienced, are in the um, lasers and 420s. And then we have a large group in the Opti, short for Optimus fleet. Um, those are the more experienced kids. 
And then we have a smaller group in what we call the Green Fleet, which is the beginner optic sailors. And so for a lot of kids, this is their very first event. And it's very exciting to see them beginning on their, their lifelong journey of sailing. And all of the boats start together. And they start between a buoy and a boat. And they have horn signals or, or uh, whistle signals usually. And the sailors have to adjust their speed and their direction so that they don't cross the line before the start. And so once they cross the line, they'll go up to a buoy and come back and, and go up and down between these buoys, um, whatever number of times the judge says, and whoever finishes first wins. For a sailboat to go directly into the wind, it has to go in a zigzag. So in order to do that zigzagging, they tack. And they go from the starboard tack to the port tack and back again. So part of the trick is that they have to do that efficiently and crisply and not lose a lot of, of boat speed. Um, but they also have to watch out for the other boats. And there are um, some very clearly established rules of right-of-way that kids all need to learn at a very young age that a boat on a starboard tack has right-of-way over a boat on a port tack. So if you're the guy on the port tack, you have to avoid the boats on a starboard tack. So if you're, if you're approaching each other, one of them has right-of-way and the other one has to go behind. So this requires a lot, of, a lot of things for the kids to understand and know in order to go out and sail in a race like this. Um, they need to learn how to handle the boat. They need to learn how to tack and jive, go upwind, go downwind. There are also tricks about um, where the wind is coming from. You want to sail where the wind doesn't always blow in one direction. It varies. It goes to the left and to the right. And that you adjust for that as you sail. It's pretty windy today, but uh, I think these kids will do very well. These are great boats to sail in, in heavy wind. And, and kids, are, kids are amazingly resilient. Inside. The feeling when you catch a puff of wind and the boat just takes off is exhilarating. No other word for it. To be, to be out there powered by wind, out there in the fresh air and the sun, it's a wonderful thing. Dr. Marvin, look, I sail. I'm a sailor. <laughs> I sail. Um, it's a motorball Bob reference, if you uh, kids don't get that one yet. It's a little obscure. But um, going uh, really quickly, 10th uh, season of Sports Path. We made yeah. it 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. 10 years. Great band as well. Um, there's a lot of people here at the uh, station here, TV19, that we have to thank, uh, that have been with us these entire 10 years, especially Judy Skyvoss, especially Arlen Becker, especially everybody else you can ever think of. They, uh, the fact that the show is still going uh, is a testament to their hard work and dedication. We can't thank them enough because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here talking to you today. Absolutely. So uh, finally, um, as you have probably heard, uh, Tim Peterson isn't here. Uh, he went to Iowa, and he's doing a, leading a great life right now. He's, uh, I believe he's growing corn, and uh, he's got his own farm right now. In what fact, else would I, he be doing I in heard Iowa? He's, I heard he's actually <laughs> building a baseball field in his cornfield. He's oh, building a baseball field. That's fancy. Yeah, so uh, good luck to him on that. Um, so regardless, uh, we'd like to say thanks to Tim for the last six years of his uh, time here. In fact, over 50% of the this time, Swords Bass and Marone, Tim Peterson has been uh, in front of the camera here, and uh, so thanks to Tim. Uh, we're happy for him. He's, he's doing some good things down there in uh, Iowa. So we leave this show, our first show at our 10th season tonight, with some of the greatest highlights 
that Tim Peterson has given us over the last uh, few years, six years or so. So uh, here it is. Thank you for joining us. Jamie and Austin, I'm Zach Elverson. So long, and uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. It's tournament time here on Sports Path, and this February madness has begun. Welcome to the show and the madness. Lots of games have already taken place this year, and we are here to get you caught up on it. I'm Tim Peterson. Welcome to Sports Path here, live from the Excel Energy Center in a state hockey tournament time, and we are here. This year was no different. Bill Murray beat a good Minnetonka team 2-1 to one in the first round, then had to play the Burnsville Blaze. Both teams playing well this season, and this game could end up to be pivotal for positioning in the conference. So Ricky, I hear you have laryngitis. Is this true? I guess it is. I'm here with Willie Brown, victorious Hill Murray tonight. You got a hat trick in tonight's game. What was working for you? You have Duluth East next. What do you know about them? A good team. They'll be here Saturday. White Bear Lake Archery has had a story program and have acquired many state and national championships over the years. You got the victory against Tartan once again. Last time it was a lot closer. This time you kind of rolled over them. What went different this time? Compared I think we played more as a team. Let's go to football. White Bear Lake Bears went through some big changes since last year. A new head coach with a new offense had many speculating that this would be a down year as the players adjusted to the new system. This wasn't the case, however, as the bone-crushing Bears were 4-2 and two going into October 12th's matchup against the hair-raising Hastings Raiders. <laughs> You got, a, you got a big interception there in this game and we're able to run in for the touchdown. Why don't you go ahead and walk us through? We all know that the real winners are the doctors, scientists, researchers, families, and children fighting for a cure. For all of us here at TV19 Sports, thanks for watching. I'm Tim Peterson. I'm Jamie Dustin. And I'm Zach Alverson. And, and that's, that's your sports fan. fan.